As residents of the San Gabriel Valley, we have a tremendous natural resource in the San Gabriel Basin. A giant subterranean pool of water capable of holding enough water to supply our residents for years to come. But there's a problem. VOCs. It stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. These compounds can cause serious short and long-term health effects. And in this case, the culprit is pollution. In this episode of San Gabriel Valley WaterWise, we'll meet a man on the front lines of making sure your water is clean. And we'll get a behind the scenes look at the technology being used to remove pollutants. My name is Ken Manning and I'm Executive Director of the San Gabriel Basin Water Quality Authority. The groundwater basin that we're actually standing over right now, we're in Baldwin Park and there is a huge lake below our feet, a, only a 100 or 150 feet below us. And this lake is about the size of Lake Tahoe, just to kind of give you an idea. It's one of the greatest resources that the residents of this valley could ever have. And while there's no doubt the basin is a great resource, the troubling fact is much of the water is polluted. In the late 1970s, we discovered that we had a problem with volatile organic compounds, primarily TCE and PCE, which were cleansers used to clean parts during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, which were part of the aerospace and the post-World uh, War II era. In 1984, the, prob the program here in the valley turned into a Superfund site. That means that the EPA recognized it as being one of the largest contaminated areas in the country. So they designated this site as a Superfund site, and it contained, at that point, we thought it was volatile organic compounds only. Well, as, as we started to get more sophisticated in our ability to be able to test for contaminants, we found that we had a whole host of other things here. We had perchlorates, which is a rocket fuel, NDMA, which is a, a liquid rocket fuel. We found that we had 1,4-dioxane. We had a number of other different things that needed to be treated. A good portion of our water is treated here at the B6 treatment facility, one of the most advanced treatment plants in the country. Well, this plant, um, when it's running at full capacity, which is most of the time, will run at 7,800 gallons per minute. Now, to give you an idea of what that's like, that would fill your normal residential pool in about a minute and a half. There are three steps in treating the water. The first step, called air stripping, uses what looks like wiffle balls to remove VOCs. This wiffle ball, essentially, um, we call it that. It'll, obviously, it's not a wiffle ball, but it looks a lot like that. Uh, this is, there are thousands of them in each one of these canisters behind me, the tall canisters. And as the air comes up from the bottom and the water mixes with these, these balls, it actually creates a very effective way to make sure that the molecules interact with the air so that it strips off the VOCs. The next step is called ion exchange. And this is called a single pass ion exchange system. The water runs through these different canisters that are here and it interacts with a resin. And that resin is specifically designed to pull an ion off of the perchlorate that allows it to be destroyed. And in the last step, giant UV light bulbs are used. This is the last of the processes that go, the water goes through before it's then served to the customers. This is called a UV reactor, and there are four of them here on this site. And what happens is the water, as it enters into these different reactors, it'll be interacting with bulbs, 2,000 of these bulbs, and it will strip off the NDMA, which is the rocket fuel that is in the water that is, is uh, present. These reactors will treat all of this water in virtually seconds by having just this slight contact with this light. It's easy to take water for granted, but it's all of our responsibility to stay informed about where our water comes from. The water industry um, has done such a great job of, of making sure that when people turn on their tap at home that water comes out. And I'd love for them to know more about their water system so that they could at least appreciate the amount of effort that goes into making sure that water is there. I want to thank Ken Manning and the San Gabriel Basin Water Quality Authority. It's Ken's job to make sure our water is healthy, but it's all of our jobs as citizens to take a stand for clean water. 
To learn more, visit sen.ca.gov/hernandez. I'm State Senator Ed Hernandez. Thanks for watching.